John grew up in Grimsby in the 1950s, when it was still a major fishing port. But he hasn't been back here for many years. I'm just wandering on towards the library because I want to find out some definite facts. Library, I might say, that didn't exist when I was here, at least not in its present form. And um, in fact, none of this existed, except for the church, of course. That was well there. Very famous church. That's got a great organ, well known. Uh, I want to find out about Emma. I want her dates, because if I don't get her dates when she was born, I can't do anything else. And I just have a kind of instinct that uh, the library, to where the records are, might be able to offer something. So, Jenny, what I'm trying to find out is the date of birth of a certain Emma Stafford. Now, Emma Stafford was married to Walter Lord Brown, who built Westport House School. Right. I've got a marriage certificate. Ah, I've been looking forward to Between Walter that. Lord Brown and Emma Stafford. We should know her birth date. No, we? because we in don't. those days, under the age column, they just put full, which meant they were 21 or over. Ah. Uh. Huh. So we can't so we know exactly she's over 21. That. Exactly, yes, yes, when she married. What we can also glean from this document is the father's name and surname. Yes. The father of Walter Lord Brown was a William Richard Brown, and the father of Emma Stafford was an Edward Stafford. Edward Stafford, that's a bit of a... Is that a surprise? Well, that's a bit of a surprise. It's not who we, it's not who we think it is. Ah. We think that it's the Marquis of... Sligo. So you wouldn't have expected to see Edward I Stafford. wouldn't expect to see, right. but on the other hand, what would I expect to see, mm. do you see what mm. I mean? I mean, it could, that could be a name that she used for her father, I don't know. I mean, it, 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 um, on the other hand, I've no reason to say that it shouldn't be absolutely true. Mm. So, I don't know, we've got more to find out there. We've also got the fact that she came from Croydon. Croydon? No connections there. No. Zilch. Right. But John, if you'd like to pass me the book just there, that large green volume. Thank you. This is, this is the original copy of the Grimsby Gazette, and it's from 1857, and just in this corner here, you'll see there is a marriage announcement. At Grimsby, on the 20th instant, by the Reverend Sidney Brown, Which brother like of the bridegroom, Walter Lord Brown, Esquire the youngest son of the late William Richard Brown, Esquire, head of the Bond Office, Her Majesty's Customs, London, to Miss Emma Stafford of Croydon, Surrey. Head of the Bond Office, hmm. Very grand. I think knowing that they were in Grimsby in 1857, it was certainly worthwhile checking the 1861 census, which would have been the next census closest yes. to 1857. Yes. And I've got a copy here. This is the 1861 census for Grimsby. Yes, yes. And here we have Walter Lord Brown, yes. head of the household. Yes. Now, this is where we can sort of work out birth years. He was 32 in 1861. So that gives ah. him a birth year of about 1829. Then, of course, we've, we've got Emma, wife, age 33. So again... Oh. 33 from 1861 gives us about 1827, 1828. Born about 1827, 1828. That gives you her birth year. Actually, actually, that fits. That fits kind of perfectly because um, how Peter Brown, he is the only Marquis that could possibly... He could have fathered her. ...have done the job. 1788, yeah, 1788, 1788 He would have been about 39, 39 maybe 40. 40 yeah. yes. Although John has discovered that Emma's birth date coincides with how Peter's reign as Marquis, he hasn't found any proof of a link. The marriage certificate has revealed two further clues to her ancestry, the name she entered as her father's and where she was from, 200 miles away in Croydon. Emma Stafford was born 10 years before it became a legal requirement to register births, so the only way John can discover who Emma's real parents were is if she was baptised. 
John has come here to Croydon's parish church to look for her baptism record. We have an old register, 1821 to 1828. Um, this is a baptism, yes, so yeah. it's... Uh, quick with this here. Mm. Very much. Lose not faith, lose not faith. Where are we? Tidy, I Bennett. Might not be here. Way, hey, Stafford. That is, and it's Emma. So that's July. July 29th. 29th of 27. Mm -hmm. And parents Edward. Edward and Emma. And she, of course, is called Emma. Emma after her mother. Yes. You see, the point is that Edward and Emma doesn't suit my purposes that she should be a Stafford. Edward is not the father, we don't believe. Do they have to give any legal documents to... No, they just, no. They, for a baptism, no, they just bowl up and the, say... The important thing was that children were baptised as soon as possible once they were born. So they could be presented by anybody to, to be baptised. They don't necessarily have to be the parents. Hmm. And Hoban? Right. Why Hoban? Because this is Croydon, so, you know, did they live in Hoban? Because it's very unusual to baptise out of parish like that. Because all, all the other ones, all Croydon. But, I mean, Hoban's quite a, a quite distant, distant distance in those days. Well, in those I days mean, it was. Hmm. Yeah. Seems most peculiar mm. that they should come all the way the to Croydon yeah. in order to have it for a baptism. Yes. I think there's more to it. You know, knowing that there is a whole different story possibility, mm. it does rather stick out as being peculiar. If it is a cover-up and it is to legitimise um, Emma, then they've done a pretty good job of it because it certainly looks, to all intents and purposes, absolutely dead on. Mm. Well, yes. Here stood Edward and Emma Stafford, so called. What was going through their minds? Was it devout or was it? My, my story holds true, then was it to fool the world, I wonder? I wonder what was going on. <laughs> 